One of the most important applications of privacy elasticity of demand is the impact of an indirect tax uh, as a form of government intervention and the significance of the coefficient of privacy elasticity. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about that with some uh, chains of reasoning and some analysis diagrams. Here's our question. Examine the significance of PED for a government in relation to indirect taxes. Now, the word examine is a command word and a question, and uh, you do need to include some evaluative comment on that. It's not the same as the word explain or analyse. Examine requires some evaluation. A couple of examples of indirect taxes in the UK, the sugar tax, the sugar levy brought in a few years back on high sugar drinks, where the rate of tax in terms of pence per litre goes up, the higher is the sugar content in the drink. A lot of businesses, of course, have reformulated their drinks in the wake of this tax to avoid the tax. And tobacco duties, well, this brings in billions of pounds a year for the UK government, with a tax both as a percentage of the retail price, 16.5%, plus £245 per thousand cigarettes, in other words, 25p per cigarette. Pretty high tax. Let's work through a chain of reasoning for this question. Examine the significance of PED for a government in relation to indirect taxes. Well, governments often in levy indirect taxes on suppliers of products such as alcohol, tobacco, gambling services and high sugar foods and drinks. Uh, if the value of elasticity is low, if the coefficient of elasticity of demand is low, for example, 0.3, then an indirect tax in a market will have relatively small effects on the quantity that uh, consumers buy. Uh, but if demand is not price sensitive, which minus 0.3 is not, then an indirect tax can expect to raise a lot of tax revenue for the government. So the key point here is that low price elasticity of demand generates high tax revenues for the government. So if the priority for the government is to maximise their tax revenues, and that could be the case, then they should tend to tax those products, those goods, maybe those services where demand is price inelastic. However, if you then go for the, the revenue and you charge a very high tax per unit, those higher prices uh, might actually encourage some form of tax evasion. People attempting to avoid and evade paying the tax, for example, through the importation of counterfeit products. And there could be some external costs from that. There could be some externalities. <clears throat> First of all, it negates the impact of a tax. If it's easy to, to smuggle in products which avoid or evade the tax. So you lose the revenue. And there can also be some external costs, particularly if counterfeit products are dangerous when, when purchased. Maybe consumers also suffering from inform some information failure. Here's a diagram showing a relatively price inelastic demand. Uh, the tax is a tax on suppliers, so the tax increases by the vertical distance between the two supply curves. The equilibrium price goes up from P1 to P2, and the total tax revenue is this area, the yellow shaded area. Uh, the consumer pays P2, the government takes P2 to P3, and so therefore the producer keeps P3. So indirect tax revenues, indirect taxes can generate a lot of revenue, a lot of tax yield if the coefficient of elasticity is low. And indeed, you could develop this diagram by increasing the tax still further. Let's add in a little extra tax there. So then drives the price up to P5. <clears throat> the tax paid per unit is P5 minus P4. The producer keeps P4. So in fact, if we now shade in the new tax revenue by adding in the extra tax, we can see that green area is bigger than the yellow area was. And therefore, Increasing the tax increases tax revenue. So this would be a terrific diagram to use if you want to show how a product with a low price elasticity of demand can generate a lot of tax revenue, indirect tax revenue for the government. However, if an indirect tax is imposed on a product with a price elastic demand, then the main effect is probably going to be on the quantity consumed. They could see a significant contraction in demand. Uh, throwing a little numerical example, it's often good just to get some application marks here. Uh, if you just assume, for example, a tax raises price by 
and the coefficient of elasticity is two, obviously anything more than one is price elastic, then demand would contract by 40% on the back of that price increase. So when demand is price elastic, taxes can have quite a hefty effect on consumption. So indirect taxes can prove to be effective in lowering demand or consumption, especially if that's one of the aims of government intervention, uh, target products uh, which you think are price sensitive. And the example could well be the introduction of that tax on high sugar drinks brought into the UK, I think England, uh, 2018. You know, the aim wasn't necessarily to maximise the tax revenue, <clears throat> though the, the extra money was handy for things like school sports, or perhaps Jamie Oliver wants to use that money to fund uh, free school meals. Uh, but the study published by published in the British Medical Journal recently found that people in the UK were buying and consuming less sugar from soft drinks. So the sugar tax seems to have worked in terms of producing sugar consumption. Some of that's due to the tax, some of that's due to producers reformulating their drinks, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, etc., to avoid the tax. And there's, in terms of evaluation, uh, some people may have shifted to other products. They might have shifted to, I don't know, uh, sugary biscuits and, uh, and uh, other products, uh, which makes the tax less effective in improving health outcomes. And again, here's a demand curve which is more price elastic, and the tax here has a greater impact on quantity bought and sold. So the tax causes the price to rise from P1 to P2, and quantity falls quite sharply from Q1 to Q2. The tax revenue, of course, is now less. There it is, there it is in yellow. So if you impose a tax, you get less tax revenue. Well, you get some tax revenue, but you get less than if the demand was much more price inelastic. And use these diagrams, nice, clean, clear diagrams, to illustrate and to build the point you're trying to make. So there we go. A quick video here on the significance of PED with indirect taxes. If it was useful, we'd love you to press like. We always like that. <laughs> uh, maybe press the notification bell and um, to get uh, news of new videos. And thanks for joining me. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive. See you soon.